Daisy Puller is 85% hair, 15% desperation. Daisy couldn't exist without her hair. It is her lion's mane. It's her crowning glory. When Daisy walks into a room, nobody's gonna miss her. She's eight foot tall, hair bigger than, what's something that's really big? Because it's bigger than that. <laughs> I think I am Daisy, you know what I mean? Like, I think she is so much part of me. Like, drag has always kind of been there in the peripherals. You know, a lot of my childhood photos, I'm all frocked up. I didn't start doing drag properly uh, until I moved to London 10 years ago. Uh, and I fell in with this amazing, messy, ragtag bunch of misfits called Zinc the Pink. So starting out at drag, it was really messy, DIY, party store wigs and things from the pound store staple gunned onto swimsuits, which I loved. But there came a time where I really needed to carve out a more individual voice for myself. Editing and curating Daisy's aesthetic and her character a little bit more was one way that I was able to do that. So I remember going to see my good friend Jack, who has a little business called Wig Chapel, and sitting in his studio, and I had all these references. Basically just opened up my brain and spewed out everything that I've ever loved. I really enjoy working with him because I can take three or four really random references and he manages to stitch them together into something that is always more glorious and more beautiful and more high-end than perhaps I would ever have dreamed of myself. You put together a look, you're going to make sure you've got the right bag or you've got the right shoes or that, my, you know, my contacts match the glitter under my eye. Without the wig, without the hair on top of it, it doesn't work. That pulls it all together. Every time, it always makes whatever I've put on my body elevated to like an entirely different level. When I was a teenager, I had really, really long hair. It was beautiful. And it was the first time that I understood the language of hair and how it could help me survive and also thrive. So I went to a pretty strict Catholic school in a small country town called Toowoomba. And there was a very stringent dress code. So boys weren't allowed to have hair any longer than their collar. And of course, I desperately wanted to have long hair. So fast forward a few years and I'm allowed to grow my hair into a beautiful, glossy, auburn mop of ringlets. And this was kind of like the late 90s. So everybody thought that I was this real indie kid who loved like Foo Fighters. And I'd often get compared to Dave Grohl. But in fact, I was going home at night and in the bathroom mirror, painstakingly styling my hair to be like a 1964 swirl ponytail Barbie. I just remember I'd spend hours in the bathroom sort of combing my fringe and trying to work out how to do that thing where you like wrap the ponytail with your own hair. Why is Daisy blonde? The choice to always be blonde was conscious. I feel like it's probably because, like everybody, 
I've grown up under this inexorable influence of Western beauty standards. I loved all of these references from the 60s, you know, Dusty Springfield, the old Barbies, um, uh, Verushka, huge influence for me. I could do any sort of hairstyle. It could be big, it could be small, it could be curly, it could be straight. But if it always falls into that same signature sort of honey blonde color, then I suppose I felt safe that it was always going to be Daisy. On a deeper level, I've chosen her to be blonde when I'm not because they're always the popular girl. They're always the one that people want to be with. You know, you want to party with the blonde. Hey, be friends with me, I'm really great. I wasn't popular as a kid. I didn't really have very many friends. I was really weird, I didn't fit in, I didn't play sport, which is the main currency in Australia. I think Daisy really is my childhood idea of what a popular, glamorous, fun-loving woman would be. There is that sort of childlike, bonkers element to everything that Daisy does. She's also my outlet, you know? Daisy gets to be unabashedly herself. She can be loud and uncoordinated and fall over nothing, and it's endearing. The thing is, you can't walk into the room with this huge big hair and long lashes and a crazy outfit like you're a walking prawn cocktail and then be a wallflower. It gives you that gateway to release that really unstoppable part of yourself. We all have it. And for Daisy, massive, glorious, ridiculous wigs are her way of tapping into that power. The power of Daisy isn't just sweetness and light. In 2018, I was diagnosed HIV positive. And it came as a real shock and a real surprise. And dealing with it emotionally was very difficult. However, at exactly the same time, I was preparing to do the biggest performance Daisy's ever done as part of the Miss Sink the Pink pageant, alongside a couple of other incredible drag artists. I showed up at rehearsals and I told them, I'm going to be a giant garden gnome with a watering can full of glitter. And you're going to be my sexy garden gnomes and you're going to dance around me. I felt so um, accepted, not judged in any way. Nobody ever asked me any question. No one ever said, why on earth would you want to do this? They're just like, oh, OK, cool. Yeah, of course, that makes total sense. Looking back, it's so bizarre because I think actually if I hadn't had that outlet, that escapism of preparing Daisy for this big show, I don't know whether Dan would have been able to cope. I was going through this horrible period of self-loathing and <laughs> shame uh, and secretly sneaking off to doctor's appointments. Daisy can talk about it too and she can help educate people and she can bring these stories into the light because gay men and trans women were disproportionately affected by, by the AIDS epidemic and so we don't have those people to look up to now. It's important to me actually that I can she can make lemon and lemonade out of those lemons, you know? And she can talk about, uh, she can talk about it and she can be, um, I guess I'd like her to be able to be, you know, one of those role models that, that we lost as a community. Oh God, I wish I didn't need Daisy. She costs me lots of money and my house is always a mess. Daisy's got more friends. Daisy gets bought more drinks. Daisy gets invited to more parties. <laughs> she, she gets to meet people. She gets to be in, she gets to be in films for God's sake. Dad doesn't get asked to be in a film. I'm only here by default.
I'm only here because she wasn't available today. Oh, bitch.